Hi everyone, I'm Ali Bloom from the UK Data Service User Support and Training Team based at the University of Manchester. And today I'm going to talk to you about some of the data sets available from the UK Data Service that could be used to explore various aspects of deprivation. So just a quick rundown of this presentation. So I'm going to start by giving a quick summary of what the UK Data Service is. Then I'm going to give an overview of some of the key data sets for this topic, highlight where you can find some case studies on how this data has been used, and then uh, demonstrate how you can find and get access to this data. So starting off, what is the UK Data Service? Well, we are a comprehensive resource funded by the Economic and Social Research Council, and we provide access to the largest collection of social, economic and population data in the UK. And basically what this means is that data providers deposit their data with us, and then we make this available to users uh, to access for secondary data analysis. As well as this, the training team, which I'm part of, provides support, training and guidance to help researchers find, access and use this data. So who's it for? We like to say it's for everyone. So whether you're an academic researcher or a student, you work for a charity or an independent think tank, or you're even an independent researcher, the UK Data Service data um, is for you. And our data comes from many different sources, such as official agencies, such as the Office for National Statistics, uh, research institutions, public records and historical sources. And we hold data of many different types, mostly survey data, both cross-sectional and longitudinal, aggregate data, international data, some census data, and also qualitative and mixed methods data as well. So moving on to the theme of today's webinar, uh, starting off, I want to say that deprivation can be defined in many different ways, depending on what a researcher is interested in. So I'm gonna lean away from giving a concrete definition today and instead highlight some data sets that might be useful for exploring deprivation, and have questions on things like poverty or economic situations, labour, housing and food. And I'm going to go into a bit more detail about these data sets now. So the first of these is the Households Below Average Income data set. And this data set provides information on living standards in the UK based on household income measures for the financial year. The data for these come from the Family Resources Survey, and it's used to explore the number and percentage of people living in low income houses in the UK. And this data is also currently being used by the Department for Work and Pensions to develop a new measure of poverty. Next up is the Family Resources Survey. So this survey has been run continuously since 1992 and uses a large representative sample of households in the UK. Although it is worth noting that prior to 2002, the sample was Great Britain only. The focus of this data is income and the different sources of this, but information is also collected on things like expenditure on rent, mortgages and bills. As well as this, the survey also collects personal characteristics at both an adult, family and household level. And these include things like education, caring, uh, childcare responsibilities and disability. And also relevant for the topic of today, uh, it has measures of material deprivation, food security, and new for 2021 and 2022, information on food bank usage. Next up is the National Diet and Nutrition Survey, also known as the NDNS. This survey has been run continuously since 2008, and it's designed to assess the diet and nutrition and nutritional status of the general population. The data for this survey comes from two sources, both an individual food diary data um, and a face-to-face -face interview. This face-to-face -face interview collects more detailed information on food and habits in general. So things like smoking and drinking, physical activity, and there's even some physical measurements recorded in there as well. It also covers household food security, uh, occupation and education information, food bank usage, information on income, wages, bills, and whether the household receives any benefit support, and also information on health, disability, and general health as well. Staying on kind of the topic of food, we move on to the Living Costs and Food Survey. This is a UK-wide survey that collects information on expenditure and food consumption, 
and data is collected through the use of firstly a household questionnaire. This is answered by a household, represent, uh, household reference person who answers on behalf of the whole household. Then an income questionnaire which collects a key person level variable, so this is asked at an individual level. And then uh, expenditure diaries where each individual aged 16 years and over in the household is asked to keep diary records of their expenditure for two weeks. This survey is conducted every year and it's a key source of information for social and economic measures. For example, measuring household spending patterns and uh, the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs also use it to gather detailed information on food consumption. And here are some more of the topics covered in this questionnaire. I put them here in a bit more detail because they're quite extensive. So we have information on household characteristics, uh, relationships between those in the household, accommodation, demographic information, information on employment, education, again, that mortgage and bills information, uh, electricity and gas payments, which is obviously relevant for uh, with the current cost of living and um, rising energy prices, whether the household is in receipt of healthy start vouchers or free school meals, uh, any non-food purchases, and also the impact of COVID-19 on various aspects of spending. And then the individual questionnaire uh, is much more income focused. So you have information on employment, where the income comes from, whether it's different types of jobs, and then things like how much tax is being paid, uh, student loan repayments, and then things like benefits and pensions. If you are more interested in attitudes to deprivation and poverty, you might be interested in the British Social Attitudes Survey. In particular, I want to highlight this teaching data set that we've put together based on this. So the British Social Attitudes Survey began in 1983 and it aimed to measure continuity and change in attitudes to social issues. It uses a representative sample and it covers political, social and moral issues. And the teaching data set, like I say, was originally created from the BSA data set. But the aspect of it that makes it a teaching data set is that it contains a reduced number of variables and also a more simplified documentation, which makes it more suitable for teaching or those um, just getting to grips with survey data. Additionally, I want to flag that this data is open. So that means it can be downloaded and used by anyone at all without the need to register. So you can download it straight from the website um, and I'll go into a bit more information about registration and access uh, later on. And this data set is themed to focus on attitudes towards welfare and poverty, and it also includes uh, political views, political identification and uh, demographic variables as well. And if you are interested in the full data set rather than just the teaching one, these variables and more are included in the full uh, 2019 BSA data set, which is again accessible through the UK data service. If you are interested in deprivation from a housing perspective, the English housing survey may be useful. So this survey collects information on people's housing circumstances, uh, the conditions, and also again, relating to that energy topic, the energy efficiency of houses in England. As well as this, it interestingly collects information on how people feel about their housing, their neighborhoods, also household characteristics, and again, measures of income. As well as this, there is also a physical survey which measures the uh, actual conditions of the house as well. So those are examples of some particular studies, but as well as studies that relate to relevant topics, many surveys also contain general measures of deprivation, such as the indices of multiple deprivation. Uh, and some surveys that contain these measures of deprivation include the Crime Survey for England and Wales, the Millennium Cohort Study, the Active Lives Survey, the Health Survey for England, and the National Survey of Sexual Attitudes and Lifestyles. And I haven't gone into these studies uh, in complete detail on each slide because there only tends to be one or maybe two uh, deprivation variables included within them. But this means that they can be really useful if you're wanting to research deprivation alongside these other topics. So looking at the impact of health on deprivation or deprivation on health. So for example, the Active Lives Survey, uh, looks at the amount of exercise that people do. And the Millennium Cohort Study uh, follows individuals over the life course. So you could also look at that aspect as well. 
And if you are interested in more about these different measures, our impact director, Neil Diamond Green, has written a blog post all about this. You can find it on our data impact blog. Also talks a bit about the difference in measuring deprivation, uh, poverty, and how we can kind of understand that. So do have a look at that if that would be interesting to you. It's uh, referenced in the resources. If you are interested in further examples of how these data have been used, the impact section of our website, which I just mentioned, contains blogs and case studies of how these data have been used. In particular, uh, relevant to this topic, we have sections on poverty and also housing and homelessness. So that's the idea of some of the data sets that you can access. I'm now going to quickly cover uh, how you can find these data sets on our website, how you can search for them and then also how you can go about accessing these. So the first place you can search for data on the website is our catalogue search tool. So this search tool allows you to search the 7,300 plus data sets that are available from the UK Data Service. You can enter relevant search terms into the search bar, or if you know the name of a particular data set, maybe one of the ones I've mentioned today, you can type this in. And you can also search by study number if you're wanting to go back and check the same data set. You can also use the filters down the left hand side to further refine your search. So we've got topics that you can select, a data type. So, for example, if you were looking for particular teaching data, you could search it under there and access. So particularly open data and also country. So if you wanted the data to be from um, a particular international location, for example. Next up are our browse data pages. So these pages allow you to browse by themes. So we have topics such as COVID-19, economics, labor, food, health, housing, uh, poverty. You can also browse by data types. So if you are particularly interested in UK surveys or maybe longitudinal data or uh, census data, you can search for those. There's also a section that links to particular teaching data sets. Or you can search in general, looking for things like geographical data, our online analysis tools, and there's also a link there to search for open data as well. You can also search for particular variables within data sets in our variable and question bank. So, for example, if we type in deprivation, we can see which data sets contain variables on this topic. Uh, just a note on the variable and question bank, though, it doesn't contain all of the data sets we currently hold. So it's worth searching the catalogue as well, just to make sure that you're covering um, all the information there. If you're interested in qualitative data, we also have our QualiBank. This is a really interesting tool that allows you to search within different qualitative resources for key terms. So, for example, if you wanted to know if someone had mentioned the word poverty within an interview transcript or perhaps within an essay that they'd written um, or part of a longer answer in a questionnaire, you can type this in and it will search within the resources that we hold. Then you can just click at the bottom uh, to access this collection from the data catalogue and it will go through the process of you being able to access that data. Finally, we have the HACCP thesaurus. This search tool contains key social science terms and related concepts. So, for example, here we can see that deprivation has been categorised under social disadvantage. Uh, you can narrow this down into a more focused concept like uh, homelessness or poverty or relative deprivation. Um, or you can look at related concepts. Or if you want to conduct a search for this term in the catalogue, if you just click next to the keyword search section uh, on the screen there, it will take you to a search for social disadvantage in the catalogue. Now, just a quick point on the different access levels for our data. So I'm going to run through these just to give you a bit of an idea um, of the different uh, levels and the different requirements at those levels. So first of all, we have controlled data. This is also called secure access data and is one of the most restricted types of data. This can only be accessed through a safe room, uh, through the secure lab. There is some remote access, but it does depend um, on location and setup, etc. Um, or through our safe pods, which are specific safe rooms set up um, at various uh, universities and libraries. We then have safeguarded data. This is end user license data, which requires you to register with us and agree to the end user license agreement to be able to access it. Um, and also coming under this, we have special license data. 
This usually means that there's an additional form that you need to sign or agree to uh, use the data in a particular way, and then the data owner will approve your access. There is also reshare data. So this is data which is self-deposited. So for example, by um, people depositing their thesis or anyone who's had their research funded by the Economic and Social Research Council. Um, and these access controls can vary because they're set by the data owner. So uh, our, our access team can help with that if you're interested in looking at that data too. And finally, we have open data, which I mentioned earlier can be accessed by anyone at all without the need to register. Finally, most of the data in our collections uh, can be accessed free of charge. Like I said, there is um, potentially a charge for some commercial uses, um, but the information will be there depending on what data set you're accessing. But to access some data, like I said, you will need to register. You can do this by either logging in through your institutional login. So for example, if you are part of a UK university, a further education college, a government department, or you work for a local authority, you can log in, uh, go through your usual portal, usually Open Athens or Shibboleth, and you'll be able to sign in and access the data. If you don't have one of these institutional logins, that's perfectly fine. Uh, you can request a UK Data Archive username, and this might be relevant if you are, for example, an international researcher, you work for a charity or think tank, uh, you're wanting to access data for a school, uh, you're from a commercial organisation or you're a personal researcher. So thank you all very much for listening. I hope that overview of deprivation data sets is uh, useful and please do let me know if you have any questions. <laughs>